everybody. Welcome to part seven of Restoring the Ancient Past. We've been talking about all the crazy, wonderful, supernatural stuff that you may not hear discussed in most churches these days, uh, but it's all in the Word. And we're learning that our Father God has created all things, that Satan possesses no creative ability whatsoever. He only steals, kills, and destroys. So he steals what the Father has created for his glory and for our good, and he perverts those things. Sometimes they're barely recognizable, but they belong to us. And, uh, you know, in past seasons, the body of Christ has seen things that maybe the New Age or the occult or different people are walking in, and they've rejected those things because they thought it belonged to them. But we're growing to maturity, we're waking up, and we're realizing that anything the Father has created belongs to us. We have to take it back, probably have to clean it up, and... Uh, it, it, it belongs to us, and the, they're only accessing these things illegally because we're not accessing them legally. legally. Legal access is through the Lord Jesus Christ. John 10 says that he is the door, and he is the only way that we can access these things legally. So uh, part one of this series lays a really solid uh, biblical foundation if you're interested in learning more about that. And in the subsequent uh, lessons, the next you know, two through six, we talked about stuff like translocation, teleportation, uh, transrelocation, disappearing, levitation. All this stuff is in the Word. Uh, we talked about interacting with the cloud of witnesses, how that is not the same as necromancy. We talked about interacting with angels and heavenly beings, uh, transfiguration, the, the counterfeit being shape-shifting. We talked about auras and that God has an aura. It's the rainbow that surrounds his throne. You can read about it. Peter, Peter's aura, or his shadow, healed the sick. Uh, we talked about telepathy and time travel and time dilation. All this stuff is in the Word. We talked about the third eye and how that was the fountain that was opened up in Genesis 3 when uh, Adam and Eve ate from the wrong tree and how it's to be guarded by the presence in the Word of God. Uh, we talked about astrology, the Maseroth, uh, zodiac, the real and the counterfeit. And then last time we talked about alchemy, transmutation, and the miracle of multiplication that really is our normal state. We talked about how that works in the realm of the spirit. So you're in for a treat today because we're going to talk about chakras, meridians, ley lines, and portals. And really, biblically, um, they're ancient gates, they're everlasting doors, they're highways, they're the ancient paths. Um, and, you know, I mentioned uh, in an earlier teaching that I don't like to use uh, New Age terms or secular terms. I think that's like eating the scraps that fall to the floor when we could sit and eat at a banquet table with the king. So we're going to use uh, biblical terms because it's in there. So I want to start by reading a psalm that's, that's been one of my favorites for many, many years. It's Psalm 24. And um, I remember, I was probably back in maybe 2000, 2001, that the Lord began highlighting this psalm to me. I was part of a prophetic ministry in Orlando uh, called Bridge Builders. And uh, we were known for uh, just the prophetic, prophetic worship, prophetic intercession, prophetic declaration. We love to just flow with the Spirit. Um, we just put up our sails and see where the Holy Spirit would take us. And sometimes our minds would comprehend what was happening, and other times we didn't fully comprehend it. And, you know, because the religious system is all about shame, fear, and control, a lot of times uh, churches, you know, leaders, church leaders are really nervous about that. Uh, but we loved it. We thrived on it. And I remember many times that Holy Spirit would come and we'd begin singing or declaring Psalm 24 and you could feel the tangible presence of God. You could feel the Father's pleasure. But I'm only now, all these years later, beginning, just scratching the surface and beginning to understand what David wrote and what, what the Lord was trying to tell us. But they were keys and they were being deposited in us and in the atmosphere, even though our minds didn't understand it. And, you know, that's, that's second, uh, 1 Corinthians 2.14. Uh, we're probably familiar with the passage, but it says the natural man, man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So this is just a little tidbit, but a little commercial I'm throwing in here, but don't be afraid to go where your spirit's leading you, even if your mind doesn't fully comprehend it. Your spirit can take you, if you're born again, your spirit can take you where your mind cannot lead. 
Uh, the human mind is a tool. It's given to us by God, but it has its limitations. So don't don't hesitate uh, to be led by the Spirit because the mature sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. That was your commercial. So anyway, uh, let's read Psalm 24, and then I'm going to break it down for you. I'm going to share some encounters and experiences that I've had, and then we're going to circle back around at the end of this teaching and read it again, and I guarantee you're going to see it with whole, uh, from a whole different perspective. So we're going to start in uh, verse 1. I'm going to read the whole chapter. The earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. It's what we talked about a minute ago. Everything is created by the Father. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Uh, we're not going to talk about this a lot in this particular series. I will talk about it in other series that I'm going to do. But this, this, these, those couple of verses let us know the importance of dealing with the junk in our soul, uh, the restoration of the DNA, the transformation by the renewing of our mind, being changed from glory to glory, all those things. All those things are paramount if we want to walk in the fullness of these supernatural things. It's the restoration of all things. And the restoration of all things starts in our soul our minds, our emotions, our DNAs, our bloodline, and it leads us to being able to steward the all things that Adam lost. We don't even have a grid for what he lost that Jesus has given back to us through his shed blood, and that includes all these crazy supernatural encounters and experiences that you read about in the Word. They belong to us. So I just want to encourage you to say yes to the process of restoration of your soul so that you can enjoy the fruit of that and walk in the fullness of everything Jesus died to give you. That was another commercial. <laughs> so verse 6, this is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Selah. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. And of course, that's talking about Christ being enthroned through us in this earth. So, now I want to fast forward to an encounter uh, that I had in 2011-12. Um, you know, from probably maybe to 1996 or 7 up to, I would say, 2010-11, um, I was primarily in a classroom of the revelatory realm. You know, I was learning about the prophetic and prophetic words and hearing from God for myself and dreams and visions and all that kind of stuff. Mentored by, you know, some of the forerunners, you know, Bob Jones and, and Paul Keith Davis and Bobby Connor and John Paul Jackson and, you know, just wonderful forerunners in that realm. And, and I, you know, tried the best that I could to steward that, you know, to be faithful if God gave me a word to speak it out or to write down my dreams and all that and, and mine those things out. And uh, then I went through kind of a sifting season. You know, John 15 tells us that if we produce fruit, he's going to prune us so we can produce more fruit. We don't always understand what's going on when we're in that season. All we feel is the pain. Sometimes we even feel abandoned by God. But uh, we know he, that's, he can't. It's just sometimes our emotions feel that way because we don't understand what's happening. He's growing us up. And so I came through a sifting season. And when I came out on the other side of that, I was, a, I was a little bruised and battered, but when I came out on the other side, I began to transition from the realm of revelation into the realm of encounter. And I can't fully uh, put this into human, but I just begin to know by the Spirit, whereas before I was getting visions or seeing dreams. In this season, I began to understand when I would wake up in the night season with what I would have before called a dream, I realized, okay, I was really there. Maybe not in body yet, we talked about that already, but my spirit was there, the real me, the eternal part of me that was made alive at salvation was there in the, realm, in the heavenly realm encountering these things. So the encounters uh, that I'm getting ready to share with you are, are out of that realization that uh, I was really encountering this. So um, in, uh, in 2000, probably the spring of 2012, um, I began having encounters uh, with uh, the river of life that's in Revelation 22. And because I was in the season of uh, encounter, I realized 
I'm really there. And um, I just want to say this, that I, I learned this from Ian Clayton, that the Word of God is a gateway into the realm of eternity. Often we, it, often we stop at the door and we read about it and we gain knowledge. We're very Greek like that. And we think that understanding what the words are saying on the page is the end of the story. And it's only the beginning because it's a doorway that the Father's inviting us to come into and engage with Him in. It's all about relationship. It's all about intimacy with Him. And uh, going through the, the doorway and the gateway of the Word, the Word is, is a plumb line, but it's also a, a doorway. And so He's inviting us to encounter the things that we read about there. <clears throat> so um, I begin to encounter the river of life. Uh, I want to read Revelation 22 before I share my encounter because I want to ground this out in the Word of God. So I'm going to read the first five verses, starting in verse 1, Revelation 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. Remember when we talked about the third eye? That's another scripture for that. There shall be no light there. They need no lamp nor light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. So I sat down with the Lord, you know, one day, and I uh, was just spending time with Him, and all of a sudden, I was, I was there. I saw myself drinking this water from the river of life, and um, I began, uh, you know, I saw it flowing from His throne, and it, as I drank from this river, I knew my spirit was the one drinking because my body, I, my body was still sitting in the room. My spirit was drinking, but I was aware that this living water was flowing from my spirit into my soul and it was cleansing me it was breaking through obstructions it was releasing life and then it was uh, then from my soul it was uh, being released into my body where it was releasing wholeness and wellness and you know all those things and so a couple weeks later you know I wasn't I wasn't thinking about that encounter at all I was just really that day I was just uh, I was feeling like I needed to just uh, be in his healing presence. And so I was soaking just the wounds in my soul that I had incurred from uh, my sifting season. I was just uh, soaking them in his healing presence. And just, I saw his wings come over me and this light came out of his wings and I could feel it like a, like a heat lamp going into my soul. I knew, I knew he was healing me. I knew he was restoring me. And then I began to specifically, you know, pray about grief and loss and and particularly, particularly, I was hitting things like doubt and unbelief and hope deferred and disappointment and disillusionment. You know, any of you that have been through a season of disappointment know that that's a huge hurdle in coming out. You know, you're given all these words and you have all these hopes and all these dreams and promises and then everything crashes. And so recovering from that, we have to face head on that disappointment, that hope deferred, that those unanswered questions, and we have to receive healing and breakthrough in that area. So that's what I was doing. And uh, as I did, I all of a sudden saw uh, this water of life that I had seen a couple weeks earlier. I saw it rushing through my spirit, my soul, and it hit this dam and it stopped. And I just knew, of course, that that was the things I had been praying about. It was the disappointment and the, the doubt and the unbelief and all those things. And um, I heard uh, John 7, 38, the Lord said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And so uh, I don't know if you've ever studied this, but the Greek word for belly is, is Strong's 2846, and it's kolia, which literally means womb or birthplace, but it also means the innermost part of a man, the soul, the heart, as the seed of thought, feeling, and choice. So basically, Jesus is saying in this passage, out of our soul will flow rivers of living water. So we know it flows from him through our spirit through our soul, body, out into the earth. So um, I heard that verse, and then I just kept praying into this, kept drinking from the, the river of life. I just intuitively, like by the Spirit, knew that I needed to keep drinking until that, that obstruction that I saw had been dealt with. So every day I'd sit down with the Lord, and all, I was back in that place just instantly, effortlessly. I knew Holy Spirit was leading me there. 
And um, one day I saw, I got a better look at this dam, and I saw that it was held in place by four bands. They almost look like rubber bands on the four corners. So I just intuitively by the Spirit, I took the sword of the Spirit, and I just cut them. And as I did, instantly I heard the Lord, uh, the voice of the Lord, and he gave me that passage in Zechariah uh, 4. And it says, it's, it's uh, verse 6 and 7. This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. He was letting me know, hey, I'm doing this for you. There is a co-laboring, but it's not by the works of our flesh. Uh, verse 7, who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? And in my case, it was, who are you, O great dam? But this is, it, it was in the passage, it said great mountain. You shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. So I... I wanted to bring that 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 spiritual reality that exists in its fullness in that place outside of time. I wanted to bring what was already done in the spirit into the realm of earth so it could manifest in my life. So I spoke out what I'd heard by the Spirit. I spoke it out loud. I just said, grace, grace, in the natural. And as I did, instantly I saw just this dam break and the waters just gushed forth, almost like, um, you know, when water breaks before a child is born. And so uh, what was very interesting about this encounter was I had been in, because I'd been in so much pain in my soul, I had been in a very dry season of no creativity. I'd not been writing any songs or anything. And the next day, you know, I wasn't thinking about it, wasn't trying to do it. The minute I sat down with the Lord, he gave me downloads to two songs. And that's unusual if you're a musician, you know, it's, a, it's a, or for me it was, very unusual to get downloads of a song, not even singing or sitting at the keyboard. I just got them by the Spirit. And when I went to the keyboard to start kind of hammering them out and writing stuff down, he gave me another and then the next day another. So I went from zero to five songs in two days, and that was tangible proof. I know the Lord did this for me to show me that what had happened in my spirit really did manifest in my soul, and it manifested in a free flow of creativity flowing from his spirit. You know, he's the author of all things. He can't even, we can't even worship him without, without him giving us stuff to worship him with. And so it was just, he was showing me that once this obstruction was broken, he wasn't holding back from me. I, I had an obstruction in my soul and he was showing me the tangible fruit of that in my life. And that was life changing to me. So the same, that we say the same, the same thing would happen. I knew the same thing would happen as his life flows out into my body. It's healing. The illness and all those things has to go when his life energy flows through us. And I'll talk more about life energy. If that word freaks you out, I'll talk about that word more in a minute. So I began to understand from this encounter that Chinese medicine really does understand something. Now again, realize that just because somebody understands and puts words to something doesn't mean they created it. Um, Isaac Newton did not create gravity. If you know anything about him, he was not really walking with the Lord. He didn't believe in the Trinity or, you know, he, but he observed a law, a natural law that the Father had created. He, paid, he honored it by paying attention to it. He gave language to it, and now we understand it. So it's the same thing. Uh, you know, many, uh, I believe, uh, Eastern cultures are tremendous in the sense of uh, wisdom and observing and learning and humbly learning from nature and honoring nature, whereas sometimes in Western culture uh, we're arrogant and we mow over things thinking that we know better than, than what God has already created. So Chinese medicine understands something about the flow of God's life. Some, some call it energy. They call it qi. But basically, they understand that there is a life energy that flows through us. It travels through the human soul and the human body, and they understand how it, obstructions cause infirmity. If you know anything about um, acupuncture or anything like that, they understand. Uh, the reason that they do that is because they understand that where there's an obstruction, there's, there's the potential for disease because there's not a free flow of life. They may not be an intimate relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the author of that life, but they understand the laws that govern creation. And so uh, that's Colossians 1, 16 and 17. It says this, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, 
all things were created by him and for him. He has created all things. Lucifer created nothing. In verse 17, he is before all things and by him all things consist. So here we have this, his life energy flows through all matter, sustaining it. Without his life flowing through the material realm, it could not exist. So next, I want to share with you an encounter. I'm going to have to hurry here. Uh, I want to share with you a key encounter that I had uh, regarding gates. And um, I'm going to pull this all together and give you understanding about uh, what some call chakras. Um, in, a, in, the, in the spring, March of 2011, uh, my husband Sean and I were praying together and we encountered an angel named Glory of Nations. And it was a real cool encounter. You know, he covered us and he poured out this thick golden honey and we knew it was the glory of God. And there was a little more to that encounter, but that's kind of the short version of it. So I had actually totally forgotten about that encounter. Um, I write everything down, so I, you know, I didn't lose it, but I had completely forgotten about it. Exactly four years later, I mean, almost to the day, in March of 2015, I was uh, I joined the the inter all things restored intercessors, and we were praying uh, before our Saturday night gathering, and um, I saw this angel named Glory of Nations. I thought it was the first time I encountered him, and uh, he gave me a scroll, and I heard, as he gave me the scroll, I heard the word ley lines and portals. Then the um, Holy Spirit showed me that the scroll was a map of ley lines and portals in the earth, and I knew it had to do for, with us as an ecclesia cleansing and occupying those things. It, but I also knew that the scroll was an invitation to go into the heavenly council room and to learn how to steward the ancient ways. I just knew this all by the Spirit. And so then I began to see it like a map, and it had three layers. It was almost like if you've ever seen an overhead transparency with the layers that you can peel back. It was this three-layered map, and there were highways and gateways in the heavenly realm, in the earth realm, and in our physical bodies, and they all were overlaid one on top of the other. And so I began to understand, well, of course, you know, we're, we're created with, by, by the same creator. We're, so we have the same design. And we're just a, our bodies are just a microcosm of a bigger picture. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So basically, I, understand, I understood from these encounters that there are channels of God's life and glory in the heavenly realm, in the earth, and in our bodies. In the earth, you know, people, sometimes they call them ley lines. In the human body, they're called meridians. The Bible calls them ancient paths. So um, New Age, occult, they didn't, they didn't come up with this. There are gates of access into all of these highways, all of these pathways. And in the earth, these gateways are called portals. Most of you guys have heard portals, and uh, the body of Christ has kind of reclaimed that word a little bit. That's not one that freaks us out completely now. But in the body, they're called chakras, or you know, some people call them chakras. But the Bible calls them gates and everlasting doors. It's what we read in Psalm 24. So these portals, these gates, these doors are, uh, Proverbs 8, 2 mentions them. And we're going to read that, we're going to read that passage in a minute. But it's, it call, uh, Proverbs 8 calls them the way where the paths meet. And I'll talk more about that in a minute because wisdom guards the way where the paths meet. But those intersections of ley lines or highways or ancient paths are portals, they're gates, they're doorways where we can go in and out. So it's through these gates and doors that the glory of God is poured out from heaven into the earth. It's through these portals, gates, and doorways that we enter and exit when we transport geographically or translate dimensionally. Um, we, when we talk about Solomon, when he, when he asked God for wisdom, he said, I don't know how to go in and out. He understood that his father, his father David knew some stuff. David knew how to go in and out. That's how David accessed the new covenant before the new covenant existed because he went in the doorway and he ended up in a different dimension. David traveled the time. We call it the timeline, but it's really a spiral. So um, that's the doorways are how we go in and out and travel on these highways. Now in Christ, we have legal access to these highways and these doorways. Um, it's through him. Independent of him, all others are accessing them illegally. It goes back to the, the the, it goes back to the garden. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was about accessing this stuff independently of him, whereas the tree of life is eating from his hand, living in humble dependence and going through him only. So remember, John, uh, John 10, Jesus is the door. 
Now, don't you see that in a different light? So our bodies are a microcosm of creation designed, we're designed by the same creator. The life of God and the glory of God flows through our bodies via these ancient paths or meridians and chakras, the portals, and to the earth via ley lines. And they're both just gates and highways. They're the ancient paths. So then, as God is unpacking all this to me, you know, my brain is hurting. My spirit's going, yes, and my brain is going, wait, tilt. I begin to understand when the Bible talked about Adam walking with God and Abraham walking with God and Enoch. Enoch walked with God, walked with God and was not. He, they literally walked with God on ancient paths. And these are the paths that the Father is calling us to return to. Adam lost access to these pathways Remember uh, angels with the flaming swords, the cherubim with the flaming swords were, were set in front of the garden to keep people from accessing these ancient paths in a fallen state. But Jesus has given it back to us and we can access them in him. We, can you hear the Father calling you saying, come back. It's time for you to travel the ancient paths. It's what it's one of the things that Jesus has died to give us. So now I want to read Proverbs 8, 1 through 3, and I think you're going to see this in a whole new light. I love Proverbs 8. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it's Proverbs 8 and the first part of Proverbs 9 are some of my favorite passages right now because I, I, I've had some really amazing encounters with wisdom that I'll probably share in a little bit. Um, but uh, I'm going to just read the first three verses for now. Does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high hill beside the way where the paths meet. Okay, remember we talked about the, the, the top of the high hill and how, I don't know if you guys, uh, it's a, it was a couple teachings ago, I forget which one it was, but we talked about uh, when I was, I think it was the one about the stars and how I saw the witch and the, the wizard uh, with the pointy hats and how that was a counterfeit mountain of the Lord. Well, this is the 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 top of the high hill. She takes her stand on the mountain of the Lord and she cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. So wisdom, at, at the, and some translations say at the place where the paths meet. The intersection of the ancient paths are doors and wisdom is the gatekeeper. She intricately understands these pathways because she was the architect. Proverbs 8 says she was the architect it literally says that she co-created with God in the beginning and rejoiced, the Bible says, in his inhabited world. Amazing passage. So James 3.15 talks about the wisdom that does not come from above, that's not heavenly but is earthly, sensual. Uh, sensual meaning having to do with natural senses and demonic. So this is the demonic counterfeit of the spirit of wisdom. Wisdom is such a key to guarding the gate and walking the ancient paths. And the enemy wants us to embrace the counterfeit, which again is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so that the ancient paths and the ancient ways belong to him. All the things that he has are usurped, and he only has them when we give them to him, when we're not walking in them, or when we trade with him. He knows that he's only able to be there because we're not, because light effortlessly displaces darkness just by showing up. So I want to read, uh, it's still Proverbs 8, still wisdom talking, verse 20. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice. So Bible says, uh, Psalm, I forget the Psalm, the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. So I'm convinced that these ancient paths undergird the very throne of God. Now, if you're not getting excited, you're not. You you need to check your pulse. <laughs> so, okay. So that was in the in the spring of fifteen. I'm going to wrap this up here. In the summer of that year, Father sat me down. He said, "Honey, you're a little behind schedule, and you need to go to summer school." <laughs> not exactly what you want to hear, but my summer school was amazing. So I just made a huge sacrifice. I cleared my entire schedule, and I I went to school. Uh, with the Lord from 5.30 to 1.30 every day for that entire summer. And it was amazing, and I, I don't have time to get into it now. But most of that was a, a particular classroom in the Spirit, and I was interacting with the seven spirits of God, whose job is to grow us to maturity. They're mentioned on, in Isaiah 11, 1 and 2, wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, the fear of the Lord, and the Spirit of the Lord. But my primary instructor in that classroom was wisdom. And now I understand why, because the Father's opening up the ancient paths to us. So I did my best to faithfully steward. You know, I had some crazy encounters, learned a lot, changed, God really transformed me during that summer. And at the end of the summer, in the fall, <clears throat> um, 
uh, the father told me I had graduated. And then he opened the door, and this door in my classroom, and I got to walk on the ancient paths with the father. And it's been so amazing. Sometimes, uh, often, Enoch is there uh, walking with him. I've gotten to interact with him a little bit, too. So just to summarize, um, there are pathways, channels of God's life and his glory in the heavenly realm, in the earth realm, and in our bodies. His life flows in and out of these pathways through doors and gates where there's proper alignment. That's why we must, our, the, the most important key is that we keep a yes in our heart to him because that allows Holy Spirit to bring us into alignment so that he can flow through us and we can be unobstructed channels through which he can flow. It's through these, these doorways that we can travel from one dimension to another. It's through the doorways and the gateways. There are gates in heaven, in earth, and gates in us. And I want to close with this. We are the gates of heaven and the earth. Um, it was a few months, well, probably last year now, it's probably in 2017. Um, every time I would start worshiping the Lord for maybe a month or two, I would hear him and he would, I would hear him saying, look at her, isn't she beautiful? My gate of heaven in the earth. And yes, he was talking to me, but I knew it was much bigger than that. He was talking about us, his bride, that, that we are the gates of heaven into the earth. So when Jesus prayed in Matthew 6, 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He wasn't kidding. Heaven is released into the earth through us, his gates. And this is how you know, Habakkuk 2 says that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's how it happens. It's through us. So as I close, uh, let's, let's read the, uh, the last couple of verses of Psalm 24. Just close your eyes. Now that you have a grid for what this is really saying, have if, uh, just say yes in your spirit to this, and I believe that the Father, as we read this, um, I believe he's going to open up these ancient pathways and doorways and gateways to you. If you have not been born again, if you have not stopped trying to earn uh, heaven or earn God's approval by doing good stuff, we have to realize that our own efforts are worth nothing. We have to humble ourselves and, and fully accept the divine exchange that Jesus did for us on the cross. He became sin for us so we could be made the righteousness of God in him. If you haven't done that, please do that now. And once you're in Christ, you can access limitless resources uh, legally through the shed blood of the Lamb. All right, so close your eyes. Say yes in your heart if this resonates with you. And uh, I believe that there'll be a grace for the Father to open up the realm, uh, dimensions and the, the, the ancient paths and gateways for you. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. So, Father, we just seal everything by your blood and in your name. And I thank you right now, Father, that you're opening up the ancient paths, that you're opening up the everlasting doors to us, your people, and that you're helping us to realize that we are those doors and we are those gates. And we just thank you that you're flooding the earth so that everyone will see you and know you as you as you really are, so that every eye will, will see you and every heart will encounter you, so that you will be made famous in the earth. All right, see you next time. Be blessed.